हेलो हेलो ओके सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर we had seen that what is the meaning of a object oriented programming okay so in that we had seen that what is the class and what is the objects then apart from that how to define the objects how to make the declarations how to consider the declarations of a functions how to define those functions and how to use those functions so that things that basic things regarding the object oriented programming in c++ we have already seen now we will see the major characteristics of the object oriented programming which are universal characteristics in every programming language every object oriented programming language but before that can we can be able to know that or can we say that the c++ is pure object oriented programming language no c++ is a not pure object oriented programming language why because the c++ is access through main function so therefore so and as per the rule of object oriented programming everything should be accessed through objects only and the main function is accessed directly and apart from that the friend function if a particular function is a friend function then at that time that could be accessed directly without creation of object then the third reason is a virtual function in case of virtual functions we are not using uh in case of virtual functions we are in case of virtual functions we are not using the objects instead of that we are creating the pointers and through those pointers we are trying to access the content so that we have to see in the case of the inheritance whenever we are seeing the diamond problem then at that time i will clear you the concepts regarding the virtual uh, uh uh the concept of uh virtual functions okay so basically now we will see consider uh, now uh, in the today's session we will be considered the characteristics of object oriented programming four major characteristics of object oriented programming is a encapsulation polymorphism inheritance and data abstractions if you are considering the encapsulation encapsulation is nothing but it is a wrapping of data and function together into a single unit it means that the availability of values which are written into the variable to a particular function is called as encapsulation okay so whatever the value is available written or written within that data data member so those values and that data member should be available or make availability of those to that particular function is called as encapsulation we will see this in depth then the next one is a polymorphism poly means multiple morph means form form actually okay so it means that the multiple form of the same thing for example if you are using a particular single function let us say add so add name i can able to use multiple times okay the same name with different argument same name with same number of argument but with different type is called as polymorphism polymorphism is also having the two types that is a static polymorphism and dynamic polymorphism morphism that also we need to see if you are considering the static polymorphism then function overloading function overriding is the concept in case of dynamic polymorphism we have to see the operator overloading okay so these are nothing but some of the concepts of polymorphism and the next concept is the inheritance it is nothing but it is inheriting the functions and properties from base class into the derived class okay it means that if you want to access a particular function multiple times then at that time we are seeking towards means the particular function which is defined within the base class and if you want to access those from the derived class then at that time we have to go for the inheritance data abstraction data abstraction is nothing but 
abstracting the internal details from the end user for example if you are considering the operating system the operating system is having a multiple process which are running at the back end at that time the complete internal detail is hidden from the end user that is called as information hiding and if you consider the data abstraction then at that time only some part only some part of a particular program or some part of a particular process is hidden from the end users that is nothing but just consider the we have considered the example of private private it means that the content are accessed only within that class content are permitted to get access for the class members only so that is nothing but the example of data abstraction now we will, now we will see each of them in depth okay so what is the encapsulation encapsulation i have already told you that it is nothing but a wrapping of data and function together into a single unit okay so if you had seen this diagram then at that time basically at that time basically the variable a and b so these are the two variables which we have defined let us say that two bytes if a 32 bit system is used that is nothing but the integer value and four bytes is 64 bit systems okay okay so these two variables we are considering variable a and b okay so and then after that one function that is nothing but the add functions which is having the two variables so make availability of these variables to this particular function for the further operations is called as encapsulation okay to dono ko saath mein lapetna wrapping it means that it is nothing but the binding okay so availability make availability of those variables and values within those variables with this particular function okay it is a procedure of mapping variable declared within or outside the class to function call okay the procedure of mapping variable declared within or outside the class to the function call okay it means that class ke bahar ke variables and the content of the class make availability of those variables to the functions is called as encapsulation okay so i think this much is sufficient as far as it say as far as this session is concerned in the next session we will consider the example of inheritance okay so we'll stop